The Sabres make three selections in the first round of the draft, all three centers. We'll talk about what happened, maybe a little bit about what's to come on day two of the draft, but mostly what the Sabres did in round one, coming up on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available uh, wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also watch the podcast on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe. Joe DiBiase and Jordan Hanskin. I'm on Twitter at Sticky Joe Sports. Jordan's on Twitter at JR Hanskin. We are through the first round of the NHL draft. We are recording between the first round and the second round. Second round gets going Friday morning at 11 a.m. Plenty on today's show about the three picks that the Sabres made. Matthew Savoy at number nine overall, Rasmus Osland at number 16, and Yuri Kulich at number 28. There were other things that did happen on draft day not pertaining to the Sabres. There was an Alex DeBrinket trade. Uh, Jordan, you haven't spoken yet on the Matt Murray trade that almost was for the Sabres. I guess before we get into the guys they drafted, do you, you got anything on that? The Sabres basically agreeing to a deal where they would have moved up from 16 to 7 to take Matt Murray's contract, and Murray nicks the deal. Um, so first off, I wonder who they wanted at 7. So they would have kept 9, so that you could mm-hmm. tell they probably still would have gotten Savoy there. Or were they just like hedging their bet? Like, would they have taken Savoy at seven, or would they have taken somebody mm-hmm. else? Like, what was their what was their rationale there? I find that very interesting with that, and also like, I'm not. I don't think Matt Murray's solving any of our goalie problems anytime soon. So it was just like, it, to me, it was all about moving up in the draft. The Sabers wanted to move up in the draft to have two top ten picks, um, mm-hmm. and that was a way to do it. Take on more salary. Um, I don't think they intended to have Matt Murray start for this team. Kind of funny from Ottawa's perspective, right? Ottawa agrees to that trade. N- Murray nixes it. And then two hours later, they send seven for Alex to bring it to it uh, in Chicago, a two time 40 goal scorer. Like you, do they know that did they really want to bring it or did that happen that quickly? Because if they wanted to bring it, they wouldn't have parted with seven. I don't think to give it to the Sabres. So kind of interesting. They might have not thought Dabrinka was available. Maybe. Well, everyone seemed to think that, but maybe Ottawa didn't think that he would. Well, here's the thing. Maybe Ottawa circled back and said, you know what? what let's, let's, why don't we be the team to do that? We still got seven. Um, the, the interesting part about that for the Senators is they made that trade blindly. They made that trade without knowing whether or not he'll sign their long term. He's going into the final year of his contract before he's an RFA, but then he could do the Reinhardt thing of saying, Hey, Ottawa, I'll play there a year. And then I'm only signing a one-year contract, two years I'm walking. And the senators, I mean, maybe he'll sign there. They don't know. They just traded for him without talking to him. Uh, So definitely a risk by the senators. They are trying to get good. They're trying to get good right now. They are in the same boat, similar boat as the Sabres, where they were getting a lot of credit from national media about, okay, they're building it back up prospect pool. You know, a lot of young pieces that are really coming through the Sabres are, are just continuing along. Let's build the prospect pool, build the pipeline, youth movement. Let's keep it going. Ottawa's out here. Train picks for Alex to bring it. They're in rumors to trade for Mackenzie Weger, this uh, defenseman from the Panthers. They're rumored to be uh, willing to give Claude Giroux this monster contract. And Giroux's what? 35 years old now. So what do we prefer? what the Sabres are doing right now or the Senators just being like, all right, it's time to push the chips to the middle. I think I like the Sabres push more. Um, Now I like the idea of like aggressively firing for playoffs because man, like wouldn't it be nice to be in the playoffs? Um, But I do think this is, this is the way to go. Like I think like smart, shrewder moves that fill in like the bottom or middle six is probably wiser than like swing or the players that led the black really bad um like i i was 
part of me was like, oh, wouldn't it be like I would sacrifice Matthew Savoy for it? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, speaking of Matthew Savoy, the future uh, of the team, pool of three first round picks, that just seems. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jordan, I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have you jump out of the room and then try to come back in because we do have a bit of a connection lag there. Um, so we'll get Jordan back in here in uh, in just a second. But he mentioned Matthew Savoy, and that's where the Sabres started their night at the ninth overall pick, picking the center from the Winnipeg Ice. And I love this pick because if you've listened to the show in the last week, you know that that was my guy. That was the guy that I fell for. That was the guy that I really wanted to see them select, uh, and they were able to uh, to grab him at number nine. So not a surprise that he was on the board, Savoy, and not a surprise to me too much that they took him. Um, but I'm very happy because this is the most dynamic offensive player maybe in the draft. And when the questions about a player are their frame, you know, I usually think that guy's going to work out. Uh, and him being five foot nine, it didn't hamper my wanting to see them pick uh, Matthew Savoy at ninth overall. So, um, I, any thoughts on the Savoy pick for the Sabres at nine? Um, I liked it. Um, I got what I have the joke of you had already like a hundred Briere comparisons, something like that. Uh, um, I did it on the air last night a lot. It does <laughs> seem like that. That's the type of player. yeah. But it does seem like like all joke does seem like that's the type of player that like he could translate into being. Um, do it's hard to put pressure on a kid to be like, oh, be our next Briere. Um, but like their profile. Um, the other one I think you said was a brain point for the other other one. Yeah, five, I looked up different play, uh, player comparisons, five different websites, and all five were Braden Point. That could be a thing where w- one guy makes that comparison, and then everyone else kind of sees it, and they're like, oh, yeah, that, that works, and they just they roll with it. But, yeah, five different websites. Say, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love – I think um, it seems very good. Um, I think – I like – yeah, I like the – like the idea of the Sabers, um, when when I heard that all of the the ESPN round here, they said Sabers are going for, for one thing here, and it's very clear. I was I was like, oh, what are they going to say? It's the Sabers message here, and they said skill. I'm like, yes, <laughs> that the Sabers need to do. Um, I was like, that is exactly the types of players that the Sabers should be looking for. We need more offensive like capability. Um, and you're taking, if you're taking swing three guys that all are noted for their skill, I think mm. that that's a very smart thing. Yeah. I, uh, I, I did hear later in that show that Kevin Weeks said, Oh, what the Sabres need here is some sandpaper. And I just, I wanted to throw my hat just across the room. Like sandpaper is what they need. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, they never did that. Thank God. They could do that in round three if they want. They don't need to do that. In round one. Uh, yeah, Savoy, I mean, the Breer comparison for me is mostly because he's, like, I, one of our buddies in our group chat asked, like, is he Ennis? And I'm like, he's not Ennis because he's, one, not, like, water buggy enough to be Ennis. He's very quick and very dynamic as a skater and one of the most dynamic skaters in the draft, of course. But, like, his release in his shot is on a whole nother level than a lot of guys his size. The guys like Ennis, like the, the shot is too good for that type of comparison. And when you really try to think of, all right, players that are of smaller stature, like that, 5'9", maybe 5'10", that have those quick hands, has the quick skating, but can rip it and can can finish. How many guys like that are there in the NHL? Not many. Briere's one we had here that he was quick hands and a playmaker, but the dude was a goal scorer too. And I, that's what I see out of uh, Savoy. And also Jordan, I don't know if you'd agree with this, that we were kind of, what was the formula for how the Sabres get good that we had been talking about? They'll be driven by their blue line. It'll be power and Darlene. And then, you know, they might have, they'll be, uh, they'll be good in volume up front, right? With like, maybe they'll have three number two centers and Thompson uh, Krebs and cousins. And now 
You add Savoy to the mix along with the other two that we'll get to in a second. Savoy probably has the highest potential to be a number one center among the guys that they currently have in the organization. Yeah, it seems like it. Um, I have heard things. Like I saw somebody think like that there's a potential that he could go to wing. Potential for anybody to go to wing, like for center. Like they you just kind of mix and match, try different stuff. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I think Tage Thompson, like the best he's going to do is just like, I, 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 I can't. Tage Thompson takes it like goes up like twenty. And that I find that hard to believe. I feel like like the likely stay at this level, and is your best number one center, or do you want a guy like Matthew Savoy, who to go to that level, that hundred point level, something like that? Um, so, yeah, I, I think I would agree with you there. Um, all right, we're going to take a timeout here, and we're going to uh, talk about Rasmus Oslin coming back, and then also Yuri Kulich here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Before we do that, we want to remind you that we are brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar, new flavor, brownie chunk coconut, but it's in a puff. It's in puff form. Uh, that's right, the brown, the coconut brownie chunk Built Bar flavor that you love in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness. But stop drooling and listen. They are good for you. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and they are all delicious. And the best part about Built Puffs is, of course, they taste amazing, but you can enjoy them guilt-free because they are actually good for you. They are the perfect treat, perfect for when you get that craving. You need to satisfy your sweet tooth or if you need a quick, healthy snack. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Joe DiBiase and Jordan Hanskin back on the Locked on Sabres podcast. All right, so the Sabres take Matthew Savoy from the Winnipeg Ice at pick number nine. By the way, not someone we'd anticipate being on the NHL roster this season. Probably one year, though, and then that he seems to project as someone that would be here uh, at the beginning of 2023-24. How about at 16? Rasmus Oslin was the pick at 16. I was surprised. I thought that was going to be Danila Yurov, the Russian winger that the Sabres had been connected to by Yurov's own KHL vice president. They instead go for the Swedish uh, center in Oslin, and he gets a lot of credit for being deceptive, a lot of credit for be- the hockey IQ, elite hands and puck carrying ability. Not elite speed, but not going to be a problem either. And another guy that's not that big, five foot ten, but I'm okay with it. Um, so what were your immediate takeaways from them taking Osland and maybe even them taking Osland over uh Yurov specifically? Um, yeah, so it was, it was interesting to me that like I was I was surprised by the name. I actually thought Yurov as well. Um I guess I saw that he was like twenty two on whatever ESPN's ranking system was. Um mm-hmm. so like in theory, it was like a bit of like a reach for for whatever, um, but they went for this like a similar type of player, like the guy that has, has like that that offensive skill, offensive ability, um, and I can't really fault the Sabers for going for that and going for another center. Um, the, it was very clear the Sabers had a premium on centers for this for this first round um, yeah. because I, I really do believe that like a center can turn into a right winger or a left winger very easily. Like, I, I think that's a lot easier of a transition than the Tage Thompson one. So, like, whatever the Sabres are doing, they're just they're just trying to stockpile skilled offensive players that, you know, had as a center, too, you have a lot of offensive and defensive ability, um, responsibilities. So, like, I think that that was pretty clear what they're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah, there were many regards in which Oslim was ranked behind Coolidge. Um who the Sabres took at 28. Oslin was ranked. The highest I found him being ranked was number 10 by smart scouting. Um, Now the other like TSN, like Bob McKenzie had him ranked 22nd. Uh, Craig button had him ranked 30th, but for the most part, you saw him ranked somewhere between like 18th and 24th, like the low teens, early 20s. So maybe a bit of a reach, um, but nobody I heard from on Twitter, Sabres Twitter, seemed to not like the pick. They thought it was going to be Yurov, um, and 
uh, I think you're off no matter what started trending in Buffalo right before that pick was made. And it wasn't him, which is fine. But a lot of like the smarties really like this pick. Um, puck, puck carrying, especially. He played on a super line at Sweden. Two other guys that got drafted in the first line, first round on his line. And our buddy, our common friend, uh, Ryan Zawadzinski, sent me a clip. He's like, watch this film review of him and the other two line mates of his that got drafted in the first round and tell me he's not the one driving everything. And he was like, he's the guy carrying the puck. He's the guy with his own entries. He's the guy setting things up and his hands are super quick, lightning quick. Now, again, not elite speed. And for five foot 10, that's a little bit of a concern, but I I think he moves more than well enough to where it's not going to be a problem. He might not be the fastest guy in the team, but he's definitely not going to be the slowest either. So any thought that that might be a concern, I think from what I saw, it's it's a little over-exaggerated because he can move for sure. Uh, the elite prospects draft guide, just to read the description of Uslan. At his best, Uslan is a dynamic, shifty playmaker who takes full advantage of the width of the ice to build passing sequences. A dexterous distributor with the full array of reach, adjusted passes, and the keen eye to find options through traffic. He was the most prolific setup man in the entire Swedish junior circuit. So, playmaker. And doesn't that sound like a guy that you want to stick with like a Jack Quinn down the road? Mm-hmm. It does. It does. Absolutely. Um, I do love the biographies. Like, I feel like they're like, it's like a, like a trading card kind of sounds like, you know, like <laughs> um, but like, I mean, that's, that's, it's hard to do. I don't, I do not envy these uh, scouting guys. Cause you're like, no, seeing all the standard definition film that people have to scour through. <laughs> and it's not, yeah. it does not seem like an easy task on the eyes. I'll tell you yeah. that. Uh, other comments made uh, elite prospects is good for this because they like, they build out like quotes from like different analysts and coaches uh, from Michael Holmquist, one of the uh, Swedish head coaches in, in Sweden, his hockey sense work ethic and skill level makes him stand out. He makes all his line mitts better. He has the best hockey sense of all 2022 NHL draft prospects, a world-class playmaker and a shifty stick handler. Um, very skilled forward, always reading the play off the puck and putting in the effort to disrupt plays. Flawless all-around game. So uh, another center and uh, a lot of nice descriptions, good descriptions for another player that's maybe more driven towards the, uh, their drafting skill over like the raw size and power, which I, I like on the surface. And by the way, the Sabres weren't really a small team to begin with. They're only one. They're like half an inch behind whoever I think it's Anaheim is like the, one of the, the biggest teams in hockey last season. Like they've got to, a six, they got a six, 10 cousins or uh, not a Thompson <laughs> at center. Uh, yeah. Although cousins isn't bad size either. So one it's power not like, huge. like, yeah, we got grand people. That's exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. Um, all right. So that was who the Sabres took at 16. How about who they took at 28? Yuri Kulich. At number 28, and I mentioned there were many places where Coolidge was actually ranked ahead of Oslin. So if Oslin was a little bit of a reach, Coolidge sounded like a steal. That was the first, like, four tweets I saw after they picked him was, this was a steal. Chad Tiedemann assist was the first person I saw say that. Um, actually, the Charging Buffalo, who we had Austin on the other day, their draft magazine, they had Coolidge ranked number 23 and Oslin ranked number 24. Other rankings for Coolidge. Uh, number 18 by Bob McKenzie. Uh, number 15 by McKean's Hockey. Number 14 by TSN's Craig Button. Number 13 by Central Scouting. Um, number 30 by Sportsnet. That's the lowest that he was. And number 15 by uh, ISS Hockey. Like a lot of sites had him in the teens. The Sabres get him at 28. Check forward. Um, I'll read the description real quick of him from the Elite Prospects Draft Guide. The check forward is moving in every direction on the ice with great speed, using boards for sneaky maneuvers, and he was far... He was far the best skater on the ice in every game I've seen so far. He works smart with the boards and either sending the puck out of the defensive zone or just making a pass. Zone entries also didn't seem like a problem for him. Um, all right. I, what, any immediate takeaway on uh, on Coolidge? It sounds like every everything sounds good on him. And when you hear steal, I think you want to be happy, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it got to this point uh, at the night where I was just like, okay, I- I'm interested in when, like kind of whatever. Um, but once again, like this was this was the moment where you got like the skill line or this the the line from the the broadcast saying 
saying like, okay, it's very clear what the Sabres are. And I was like, this sounds great to me. Um, and yeah, so like, I, I can't, I can't really fault them on the pick. Um, I'm interested to hear like more as we go along with what everybody says about him. Why did he fall? Um, mm-hmm. Stuff like that. But like, yeah, yep. I, I think I, I was overall very, very satisfied with the Sabres. Um, I would have been fine if they tried to trade one of these picks. Um, I kind of, yeah. <laughs> part of me wanted them to call about Pat Kane um, hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah, like I'm good with, I'm good with drafting three talented players. I think that it was uh, definitely a wise, wise decision by the Sabres. Um, and yep. we do not need a Matt Murray. That's, that was my <laughs> takeaway. From I, the, uh, from the Coolidge, by the way, also was the MVP of the U18s. So th- he was getting a lot of credit for that. And he also played against men last year. He played in the, uh, the, the Czech professional league and had nine goals in 49 games. I mean, you know, listen, Brad Lambert was a polarizing prospect in this draft because he had all the tools, but he played in the men's league in Finland and he only had four points. Um, Coolidge at least had some production, even playing maybe above his pay grade a little bit. Now, actually, that's a good point to kind of drive us home here is what's next for these guys. What's the timeline like for these guys? I don't know. My guess, especially reading off like how, like where these prospects are would be, Savoy is one year, and then he's probably with the Sabres. And my guess would be Oslin and Kulich are two years. Actually, Oslin even said that. He made a comment last night on WGR that I tweeted out that uh, a lot of people really liked. Uh, he, he, knows, he knows how to appeal to the fan base already. He said he got asked about when he thinks he'll arrive in Buffalo full time. And he said, probably two more years in Sweden, then I'll be ready for 82 games and playoffs. Love that. Gotta love that. Now, the conundrum about him, I don't know that the Sabres will agree with him that two more years in Sweden. His Swedish team got relegated. He was good, (laughs) but his Swedish team got relegated. And he's not going to be playing in the SHL. He'll be playing in the second Swedish league. And do they think that's best for his development, or would they rather him be playing in Rochester. So I wonder what the Sabres will think of that. He wants to stay in Sweden, but I, again, I don't know that they want him could playing he move the to a different team. They could, but could, how much power does Kevin Adams have? Can he force a, a trade in the Swedish? Hey, league? <laughs> you listen here. <laughs> yeah. Right. What can he offer for that to happen? I don't know. Um, but maybe, right. He could be, he could be traded, I guess, to a team in the SHL. Um, You've got Savoy is going to probably go back to the Winnipeg ice. I, I'd imagine 99% mm-hmm. chance. Uh, and then Kulich will go back to the Czech Republic. I would imagine and play in the men's league there. So that's what next year looks like for them. Development camp, by the way, is next week. Uh, it's the 13th next Thursday. And I don't, Jordan, I don't know if you have plans to go. I, I'd like to find a way to go. I might have to not have to skip the sections on Thursday and Friday because of my work schedule, maybe get there on Saturday what Kevin Adams said last night was he expects all three of these guys to be at development camp and he expects all the guys from last year that are eligible to be there, that they're, they've been around and they want all, they want the work. So he's like, power is going to be there and Krebs is going to be there. And I, I don't think cousins is eligible, but he mentioned another guy that's on the NHL team. So development camp next week might be a show. Cause you're going to get all three of the first round picks and you're going to get guys that have been playing in the NHL. Like all like the NHL guys are going to be there too. So I'm excited for that. Um, and again, it'll be our first look at these guys. I think Savoy is going to be a fan favorite, especially mm-hmm. these de- development camp practices, just because of what he could do with his hands and like small and fast. Like, I think he's going to become a fan favorite if he really works out. Somebody's got, people need to stop telling players to say, I like wings and blue cheese though. <laughs> he definitely got told to say blue cheese. Right? Oh my no, gosh. Was- oh, no doubt. There's no way Matthew's voice like, I'll say this. He sounded like he sounded like he was like a, like in a hostage video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's like, he almost seemed confused by the inclusion of the blue cheese. Like, comment. why do I, why, why I like ranch? Why can't you? <laughs> right. No, he said, where can I get some wings and blue cheese? Not like wings with blue cheese. Wings. It was very funny. It made me laugh. Does he think he's going to get a bowl of blue cheese like on the side with his wings? Did you just eat with a spoon or something? 
I think he's seen, yeah, she seems very confused. I'll take I'll take wings with a side order of blue cheese, please. Right. Um. All right. One other draft thing. Actually, before we get to the one other draft thing, and we wrap here, Lance Lysowski of the Buffalo News, while we're recording, tweets out that Lawrence Pilot, remember Lawrence Pilot, defenseman, formerly of the Sabers, his contract at Tractor Chelyabinsk of the KHL has been terminated and that the Sabres are very interested in bringing Pilot back to Buffalo and Pilot, to make that happen, is willing to sign a two-way contract to get another NHL opportunity. I was doubtful of that. Whenever that he came up as an idea, I'm like, you probably got to trade him because he's a left-shot defenseman, so he doesn't fit on the NHL roster, and I can't believe he's going to be willing to go back to the AHL. But Lance is saying he sounds willing to go back to the AHL. So, all right, cool. Free asset, right? It's a free asset that maybe they could spin for something or make him depth. They can, they can make him depth. Uh, the one other NHL draft thing I wanted to run by you is what happened with the first overall pick. Very interesting. Shane Wright all year for two years actually has been like the favorite. In fact, I saw at one point during the regular season, he was minus 5,000 to be the first overall pick. And that continued to whittle down and whittle down in 10 minutes before the draft started. Ever, all the guys that were tracking the odds went, whoa, Slavkovsky just become the favorite. Yura Slavkovsky became the favorite to go first overall 10 minutes before the draft. And then after two minutes, all the sports book took sports books took it down because everyone's like, oh, they made the odds. Like, okay, they changed, they made him the favorite. He must be the pick. And everyone hammered the bet and they took the bet down. And then sure enough, Slavkovsky did go first overall. The first Slovakian uh, to ever go first overall. By the way, Slovakia, what a night. They hadn't had a first-round pick since 2013. They had the first overall pick, the second overall pick, and then I think they had another guy go at, like, 20. Um, but was that stunning to you? Like, especially, like, where we've been. The NHL draft is not one where usually you're wondering who the first pick is. You usually know months in advance. And here, it's like a draft day surprise. Yeah, I don't think they... It seemed to me like Shane Wright did like just didn't have the production like that he was expected to have, and whatever it was, it was a bit of a red flag. I did love though for him. I love giving Montreal like the stink eye. Like he, he was eyeing them down. He was like he's like mark my words, Montreal. You'll remember <laughs> this name. He's staring down the table. It's <laughs> yeah, such a good video. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Um. But, uh, like, I thought it was cool that they took, like, the Slovakian kid. I think that that's also – if they feel that he has the higher ceiling, right, isn't that – that's yes. the way to go, right? Yes. Like, if they if that's the way that you think you're – like, Shane Wright, probably going to be a great, great play, NHL player. But if this guy has a chance of being an amazing NHL player, you take that guy. Like, it, it can't yep. be – that he can't be that far off from Shane Wright. I don't think Shane Wright was generational or anything like that. No, definitely I think this kid. I think this kid is, like – at least on par, and then you're just taking ceiling. And I think that Montreal, if you're going that route, like I think they made the better choice. I was more interested that Shane Wright fell past two more guys. Yeah, um, that was more interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like I, but I think once again they're probably thinking the same thing. They're probably thinking like these other two guys like have the potential to be better, so we'll take them, mm -hmm. even if they might be a little bit worse right now. Right. Good on the Montreal faithful, by the way, not to just outright boo him because I was kind of anticipating that could happen. The home crowd, you know, the guy that they thought all along was going to be the first pick isn't the first pick. And listen, I, I don't sometimes I won't give like the common hockey fan enough credit. I thought they were going to boo him because he was European. And <laughs> it was kind of a weird reaction. It was like, a oh, like it wasn't like a. It wasn't like a, like, blah, let's go. Like, it wasn't a cheer, but they weren't booing either. And then, like, he walked through the crowd, and they gave him a standing ovation, Slavkovsky. So, um, not not a hostile reaction, I don't think, by any means. Like, I, I don't know why you could be, uh, yeah, it's an 18-year-old. 18 18 right. <laughs> and you got, like, really, Canadians fans, you're studying Finnish hockey league tape? Like, give me yeah, a break. Yeah, come on. Yeah, of course. It's, it's always, like, I know Canada loves, like, the Canadian teams love, like, the Canadian right. teams. They want the guy from Thunder Bay. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> but uh, I was surprised. Like I wouldn't have thought Montreal would be like that. But yeah, I think that their like their reaction was in general. I think positive. Like I think right. there were a couple of people like, oh, what? 
Like, but for the most it? part, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't negative at the very least. No. Um, and listen, I respect the hell out of Montreal making that pick, knowing that there's a risk he's going to get booed, but having the conviction to say, we don't care about the reaction. We don't care where he's from. He's got the higher ceiling. We're picking him. And like, we're, I think it is it. easy, though, when you're like, hey, we're terrible. Come on. Let's see yeah. what this guy can do. That's right. Good. Listen, by the way, the guy that deserves credit for turning – Slovakia has had a bad – decade when it comes to developing hockey mm-hmm. players if you look at slovakian players that have played in the last five years i think there's only one under the age of 30 that's played more than 82 games and there's only five total in the last five years that have played more than 82 games like, and it's all old guys like it's chara and it's sakara and it's tomas tatar and richard Ponick. like it's all like all like they've been dying as a hockey brand honestly or as a hockey nation over the last few years while other countries like Finland have just been churning out elite prospects. Finland, um, t- uh, Germany had like Germany upgraded. Like Germany is like, they've gotten like more cider and dry title now. Like they're, yep. and now Slovakia it seems like it's turning back around for them. And you know, um, who's, you know, who's turned to help turn that around Miro. Miro Shatan. Miro right. Shatan. He's the president of the Slovakian ice hockey federation. Uh, and I saw a lot of praise for him last night as like, he is helping like Slavkovskis and uh, Nemeches who went second overall. Like he's helping them get to this stage. So uh, Miro, good on him. Doing yeah, well. From what I remember about him, he was always like really into like uh, like playing for Slovakia and stuff like that. Like it was like, oh yeah, very very national pride for him. He's also talked about uh, maybe wanting an NHL GM job someday in the future. So mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of former Sabers around the league. Oh, that right was now. the other cool thing the the Mike Greer Mike Greer. My career and stuff like it was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, All right. We will wrap here. We will take a look, see what the Sabres do in rounds two through seven. That gets going at 11 a.m. on Friday mornings. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to today's show. And we will recap day two of the draft after it is over here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Locked on NHL. Locked on's local experts giving you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world, including the draft. Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute podcast.